Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Wednesday, Feb 1, already in February, people. Bang. Shortest month, shortest month of the year. Um, we get three full weeks of trading. We have three days here and then three days, uh, two days at the back end, 27, 28, or a Monday, Tuesday. Uh, but the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, one, two, three, um, have so many opportunities that we can consider this a full week. So we have four full weeks plus two extra days of trading. Let's make the most of it um, and do what we do. Uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at stocks here. I've been thinking a lot about this. I was up early this morning uh, thinking about this and saying, what's what's the most likely scenario um, at the Friday close? So Friday, 5 p.m. New York time, which is 11, um, Swiss time. What am I most sure of? Is it dollar yen higher or lower? Euro higher or lower? Cable higher or lower? Um, and rates higher or lower? Uh, and my thoughts came mainly to the, to this, and you saw some of the tweets I sent very early this morning. Um, I think we're going to fade high ones in risk, uh, and the way we're going to exercise that is basically s and P's, maybe Nazi. Nazi's a bit further away, so Nazi's 400 points away. It's three, three and a half percent away. Um, s and P's two percent away, and so we're thinking about something like this. Um, Powell is more dovish than people expect, uh, and so equities shoot the moon, but then the press conference, he's, he reels it back in, and then people realize that if he is dovish, he's worried about the economy, and if we are worried about the economy, then uh, equities uh, can't just continue on this rampant uh, rager higher. So the fact that we had a squeeze of the shorts yesterday also helps this view. One last squeeze into these Fed meetings um, could be a great chance uh, to make some money. So that's my main that's my main focus uh, going into this three day period. Um, you could also sell crude, but you know try and sell crude on the eighty two handle. But that's it's a different kind of trade, but it's kind of the same mentality. You could try and sell Aussie high ones, but the problem with selling Aussie high ones is we have rates next week and Aussie inflation is through the roof, so careful of that. Euro looks like she wants higher. I don't mind that. I think that's going to have to decouple from this risk trade, but it, it may not decouple, right? And so if risk at the end of the next three days uh, takes it you know, in the ass, um, is Euro going to be able to trade 110? Maybe, maybe not. We saw all that real money revealed yesterday with that tweet uh, about JP Morgan putting $3.6 billion into the European equity market, into European equity ETFs. That $3.6 billion is was basically your 108.40 bid. We, we kept saying last week, who the fuck's at 108.40? Was at 108.40? And it was kind of revealed actually through some Twitter and Twitter posts. You're like, oh like light bulb goes off that's that's who it is that's what they're doing um so you have some real money moving into the euro euro dollar market um but that shit could go either way uh i do like euro swiss <clears throat> higher in general we had a big sell-off yesterday at, uh, at the month end close didn't make a ton of sense to me here's your here's your trend line not exactly it's kind of a Poorly drawn trend line. Let's let's redraw that. Um, remove. Let's draw an extended trend line from this low here. Bang. Bang. Um, 
if you care about trend lines, there it is. If you care about the 200-day moving average, it's 99.11. Uh, we think picking up Euro Swiss on dips is going to work. You see Euro is, is buoyed um, by real money flows. Obviously, ECB is going to raise tomorrow. Uh, you, do have, you do have Jordan from the SNB um, speaking after Lagarde, so you got to be careful on that. Uh, but it feels like this is the kind of environment where Euro Swiss uh, can move higher and, and buying low ones um, is useful. So you have a trend line and a 200 day down at 99.20. Uh, we do think that's going to hold. And we think it's less susceptible to volatility because, you know, there's no dollar component in that. So this is the Fed doesn't really touch uh, Euro Swiss per se. Um, so we don't really need to go into these charts. We can talk about some spilt milk. We talked about selling high ones in Euro Norway. Bang. We did not sell those yesterday. Quick 10 big figures if you were paying attention. But of course, we weren't paying attention much yesterday. Um, we were doing other things. And so that's a shame. Uh, this kind of bar right here is a reason to systematize um, some stuff. So we don't like to systematize because we like to understand story. Um, but uh, while we're trading uh, systems, but wow. Let's talk about Dollar Swiss. This is the most crowded retail trade according to IG, uh, which is a London-based broker. Big bearish engulfing yesterday. Bang. Um, people are just really long Dollar Swiss. I know it's the bottom range. We keep talking about this. This could puke down to 90 cents, right? 90 centimes. Um, doesn't look like... Um, Dollar Swiss, it really just doesn't go up very well, right? It goes down very quickly. It doesn't go up very well. So um, keep an eye on this. That was a very strong, although forced move, rebalancing at the end of the month is a forced move, I know. Um, but let's see what um, Jordan has to say on Thursday about Swiss francs and what's going on. Obviously, there's no inflation in Switzerland. Why? Because... Our currency has appreciated 10% against everybody this year. So if you have a 10% inflation, but your currency increases 10%, gasoline prices have not changed, food prices have not changed. Okay, rent um, has marginally gone higher. Not that I follow that market too closely. I don't obviously rent. Um, but that's just a factor of the fact that Switzerland's Switzerland and everyone wants to come live here. And so there's always going to be um, housing problems, you know, housing is expensive here and that's just the way it always is and always will be. Anyway, uh, check out that bar in dollar Swiss. That is basically, um, Sodom and Gomorrah for retail guys made a new high above, um, 9283, uh, 92, I think that was a 76 high there. 9279, and just did not like it up there. So careful, careful. The rest of the charts I don't even want to get into because, you know, we have some European numbers today, but obviously the meat of the day is this evening um, with the Fed. So this is pointless. We're not going to do any setups here. Dollar-yen looks a little bit mispriced. You could probably sell some dollar-yen here. Uh, based on this bar, so you had this big, uh, sorry, dollar again. Yeah, so you had this big bar here from 130.40, and I sent this tweet saying, dollar yen has tons to go on the downside. Literally kiss of death. It never went lower once I sent that tweet. Um, kind of funny, but not that funny. Um, is dollar yen going to get above 130.43 today before the Fed? I don't think so. Are we going to be around, I don't know, 129.80, 130 for the Fed based on where Euro dollar is, where Aussie is, and with the exception of cable? Dollar is pretty weak. So dollar yen looks a little mispriced here. But again, these are just trades for pips, perhaps pre Fed. 
but um, the meaty bit of the week starts tonight. So our main theme is going to be try and sell stretch, uh, stretch high ones in equities, and we're going to follow very closely Euro Swiss down around 99.10. Um, voila. That's all we got for you today. No sense in bullshitting around. I wish you all luck uh, into these next three days. It's going to be fun. It's going to be volatile. Um, make your plan and then trade it. Ciao.